Let's start it right off. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the SAP! It's your boy Dave Nail with Tasha Courtney and Channing Apodoka. You got wow. it wrong. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. What's that? You have something yeah, shit yeah. all in your teeth. <laughs> pronouncing my fucking name <laughs> wrong. I've Channing known you for Ap- how long? Apodaca. You introduced me you on stage Apodoka. as one of your best friends. I said Apodoka? Yeah. Yeah. So I just went a little uh, I went a little long on the O. <laughs> yeah, give it up for your host, Dave Nail. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, it's all it's just just my accent, bro. It's fitting that you're wearing the whatever uh, up for whatever Aww. T-shirt you like that. I could never wear mine because mine was a size too small, and I was also fat when we did. I was ch- I was at one of my fattest when we did that. I so think I was it pretty chunky now, back then right? too. I don't know. We I can't hear both people. Sorry, what? It <laughs> no, should fit now. If you were fat back then, it no, was too it small was small then, to right? start, and I was fat, and you could definitely see not my, not my hard nipples, but the areola outline. That's how <laughs> tight it was when you can read the areola outline. Uh, I thought that was just like your style back then, being chunk, being chunky, or just no, just shirt. like tight shirts. Well, the shirt was just I think athletic. It was athletic cut, which means you should be you should be in shape, and I wasn't. And then I had to tuck everything in. So then you, when when you have to tuck in a tight shirt, you see all the bellies. Why did you have to tuck in for your gym teacher? Yeah, I played a gym teacher, you know. Anyway, the interesting thing, what I was thinking about and um, is, uh, is that we went to the Jake Owens concert last night. And, you know, I'm not going to say I cried. I didn't cry, but I got a little teary-eyed at some of the songs. You just relate to certain music so much, you know. Which songs? I don't know. It's just like, first of all, Barefoot Blue Jean Night. You know what I mean? It's just like, and it's not like, oh, like. Oh, my God. It's not one of those songs where like I'm singing like where I'm sad about like, oh, I miss my youth or college. You know, it's not because it's not, some country music is very nostalgic, but it's kind of just like this just appreciation for like the simple things. And that's what good country music is. Sure. It's kind of hacky, like Red Dirt, you know, Red Dirt Road's not hacky, but like, you know, like it, it gets hacky. Why is everything in this guy's songs related to color and his surroundings? <laughs> <laughs> Blue jeans, <laughs> beach scenes. <laughs> yeah, I I know what you mean, but it's kind of like that's that's. You don't like country music. Uh, I don't I don't really dislike it, but I don't listen to it. Yeah, it's sort of I don't know. It's like any other genre of music where they have like like it's, romantic it's, songs and sad songs and like jams, poppy you know? songs. A lot of it though is like. I think it's like poor music making, at least like poor lyric writing, because it's just they're kind of just can telling a story. They're like, "We walked down the street and she had on a shirt, <laughs> and then we got groceries." <laughs> <laughs> it's just like this story of some mundane. Well, the song, the one song he had, I don't remember how it goes, but he was like, "It's like if you want to drink all day, you got to start." In the morning. <laughs> and I was like, in the morning. Yeah, that's not even like melodic in any way. I, well, I fucked it up probably. But it's um it's like it's like saying you don't like um a certain type of TV show, like a dramatic it like sappy. Like it's a, it's kind of like a rom com of music. They tell stories. That's why they're uh, epic music videos, because it's a story, you know what I mean? I don't know. But like, you know, like there's certain like Keith Urban, man, when I saw him live and he played that song like Got No Money in My Pocket. I got a hold of my jeans on the road with my baby. Who wouldn't want to be me? And I'm like, I'm fucking done. I don't know. It's paint on my table. How do, I, probably, wh- I probably fucked those lyrics up, but. At what point in his career did he write that song, though? I don't know. I don't even know if He's he wrote no, it. Keith Urban has no money in his pocket, a hole in his jeans, and he doesn't have shoes on or whatever you said. <laughs> I know. And he's like, Bull- just, dude, he's like driving a Maserati <laughs> through New Orleans. Got no money in my pocket. It's all in my stock portfolio. Yeah. <laughs> what's, actually, what's funny it's about that? It's only invested in Bitcoin. Is that you think about like the evolution of an artist too, like the type of songs they write when they're young and starting out yeah. versus the type of songs that they write after they've been like touring the world. Because we were talking about how Jake Owen is sort of like Jimmy Buffett. Like he's living his life. I have no like, idea who Jake Owen even is. Life. Yeah, he well, he, he he's literally looks beachy. like a young beachy. Oh. It's like you know, a tropical. Like like Alan a Jack Jackson, Johnson. Jimmy Buffett, um, Matthew McConaughey vibes. I wish like, we could like play just, some songs for him just to like show him, but we can't. I'll uh, listen on the scoot home, dude. Listen on your scoot home, bro. <laughs> you'll be, I'm gonna make you such a Jake Owen man. You're gonna be like, you still have a massive. You have so much shit in your teeth. <laughs> It's not on the, first of all, you don't tell me this while we're recording because now I can't do anything. Well, about what it. are you going to do? Be in the video the whole time with giant stuff in your teeth? What'd you eat? 
I just had some chocolate jam. spinach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the episode, everybody. We got it. Uh, no, so yeah, yes, yes, these guys are successful. We're watching them at the top of their game, but there's something I think, and I'm going to relate this all back to us and to everything we do, all of us collectively pursuing our creative uh, endeavors. There's something you relate to uh, following somebody from their first hit single to like seeing them fucking make it. I'll yeah. cry right now talking about it. Seeing the guy fucking make it, and it's Father's Day weekend, and he brings his five-year-old daughter out and she hugs him and he goes that's pretty cool and you know it's like it's not cool for the audience it's cool for him like he's saying it's cool because for him he's not taking it for granted yeah and at the same time like i make fun of you know country artists for being millionaires and singing about this simple life but what are they supposed to do like just all of a sudden be like i only wear gator skin boots <laughs> <laughs> my clothes all kind of like yeah i mean they still have to sell their same product and that is like the sentiment of what you know, their musical. It's kind of like Trump, right? Well, like even- Trump selling the, the middle class, even though he's never, but like yeah. these, but country musicians, like, I mean, you got like, for every Taylor Swift who was like born rich, like her parents moved her from like Pennsylvania to Nashville when she was like 12, you know, for every one of those stories, you get a story of a dude who's performing in these honky tonks in Nashville where they go from bar to bar just performing for like beer money and tips and they come in for like in their van for the week and see how long they can stay. And I got a buddy who right now who is like opening for Florida Georgia line and he's and he's and he got to like sing the national anthem at the patriots game like you, you just every little victory is what you do and you, you got to start from nowhere and then the audience the true fans will like follow you like barefoot blue jean night that album i followed it and again i'm not even a huge jake owen fan but when i saw that he was there was 50 dollars tickets like close by and i didn't have to spend like you know eight hundred dollars to go to coach to go to stagecoach or coachella i was like fucking right this is cool and um and you know we didn't even like we didn't even look at the the other artists because you know so, some festivals like you want to see the up and coming people like when we went to Coachella a couple of years ago we got to see Chris Stapleton which was awesome because we had I had no idea what we were getting into with Chris Stapleton and that's a guy that you watch and you go that guy was that the guy that we saw at in Catalina no getting to that so okay I yeah in in last oh, he has night an agenda I got a whole agenda it got a whole last night was we're we're we're, we're doing it and it's he's singing about just being with the people you love and it's like it's just simple and of, and of course it can kind of come off hacky recapping it but like he jake owen was on the side of the stage when jason aldean was performing at the october 1st uh deadliest shooting in u.s history you know in 58 vegas. people died oh, the vegas, vegas one yeah. 300 people were injured and 58 people died and he was on stage he had just performed so like and he mentioned it without being he's like i don't know how to bring this up but like the fact that we're all out here is pretty cool and i don't know it's just cool so like it it isn't too often we get out of our own way with our own like day-to-day things and looking at social media all day and it's like if you're not feeling good one of the number one things they say to do is uh subscribe to the sex actually podcast but the second thing to do (laughs) is listen to some fucking music i i was when i when i first moved to la like six years ago and when when tasha and i were just friends the the deepest depression i've ever been in i'm not talking about like the fact that i was just like crying every day but like this i was just so lonely and i and i bought one of the only albums i ever bought and it was kip moore right and i just listened to every one of this guy's songs and i listened to it like when i was doing background on set i'd have my bluetooth headphones in just like listening i was like this this album was like got me through that and that's what like good music does it gets you through shit and um and then when when channing and i met um a couple years ago four years ago uh, that's when he saw just how talented talent can be. Oh, man. That's when my boner really kicked yeah. in. But we were performing at this Bud at Bud Lights Up for Whatever tour where basically we were just there with like, uh, you know, maybe a thousand people and it was like a free weekend concert for them and we were like the local performers for those just trying to catch people up. And then um, and then this band comes on and you never know. All of a sudden Snoop Dogg's playing and you're like, what? Like you never know. You know, it just it was one band after another, but they would just surprise you. There was no like coming up next. It was just like a surprise weekend concert. And this 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 music starts playing and i'm on the beach right next to the stage and i'm like dude man they're playing kip moore covers fuck yeah this is awesome <laughs> i'm like this guy's really good at playing kip moore oh and i look around and i go and i fangirl that's kip moore i remember that and, exact moment and look there's a thousand people how many of them were real kip moore fans 40 i mean like no one people listening who's kip moore he's not a huge name but like his fucking music man oh boy there's there's some good shit in there and like so anyway, I wanted to talk about empathy and like 
you 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 empathize with something that's like like you. So like seeing a rock star's journey, I see a lot of empathy. I, mm-hmm. I feel a lot of empathy towards like seeing them make it on that big stage because that's what we want, right? Yeah. And it's not like in some super narcissistic. I want a million people looking at me. You just want to know you made it, and like what making what what making it like what it is is always different, but it's easy to see at the at the big stage, the headliner, the guy who's singing his songs because he didn't make it when he wrote those when he got his contract ten years ago. When he got his recording contract, you know what I mean? Do you but don't you think that like he probably, because I feel like he was saying something like that last night, just talking about like feeling depleted when they're nonstop on tour and it's been a crazy couple of weeks. And he said something about like his fuel tank being low, but like the crowd's so great tonight. Like you guys are really filling up our well. And so it's like, I don't know if anybody ever knows that they made it. I feel like a lot of creative people like that, they never feel like they made it. Like he might be mad that he wasn't on the stagecoach lineup yeah. or something. You know well, what I mean? I mean, at every step of the way in any creative endeavor, I think you're going to have like your little landmarks. And then every everywhere you go in your career, you're going to have that next level that you want to get to. When you're doing clubs, your next thing you want to do theaters. When you're doing theaters, next thing you want to do stadiums. stadiums. And when you're doing stadiums, you want to do mega domes. You know what I'm saying? Like even well, you George go, you Carlin. would go mega dome. Yeah, you'd go theater to arena to stadium. Oh, Just, I'm sorry, I, I skipped would. arenas. <laughs> yeah, you, gotta, you, gotta go you gotta do the hockey arenas. You gotta do the Canadian <laughs> circuit. You gotta do the hockey arenas, and then the state, and then baseball stadiums, which is what Jake Owen's doing, and then football stadiums, which is Kenny Chesney level. That's a t- if you're doing football stadiums, man, fuck you. And That's then if, Garth Brooks. He only does football it's stadiums. Crazy, right? And then have you ever been to a concert in a stadium? No, it's pretty crazy. I mean, it's just I it, saw Kiss at Dodger Stadium once. There you go. Yeah, that's pretty big. Yeah, I guess it does. <laughs> is that what, like who would you be your dream guy? If I could surprise and be like, oh, come in here, kiss. Like who would be your dream guy that you would that would that would that would break you down into tears right now to walk like a, that was gonna walk in here? Yeah, a musician. Yeah. Ooh, Glenn Danzig probably. No idea who that is. It's the lead singer either. of the Misfits. Oh, okay. I actually like wouldn't even want to talk to him because he's like <laughs> known for being an asshole, but it just he's like such an entity. It'd be like holy shit. Yeah, that's Glenn Danzig. You know what I mean? When you when you when you say like, does Jake Owen realize like absorbing other people's energies? It's like, yeah, you it's you it's a job you you have to it's a job they have to do, and sometimes it's a job that you don't want to do, but it's like whatever the contract is, like you got to do it. Like if you're if you're an A list actor, you got to do the press tour, you got to do shit that you don't want to do. But it's just I don't know. I mean, it's like the, even you might your your happiness is going to be your happiness like your level of wherever you set it at life isn't going to change much like people that win the lottery you get a big paycheck two days later i'm like okay what what now yeah like you still live real life like I, I, dude like i bought powerball tickets powerball tickets or whatever they were and i didn't check to see if i won do you think i won maybe <laughs> but if she did win she'd be like ugh. We're gonna have to buy a lot of stuff. <laughs> like she would immediately, like as soon as we got to the concert, I'm go yesterday. find a new bank. And you're like, there's fucking traffic out I here. Be a I don't want to. Yeah. It's always I have to set something. up a trust. No, yeah. more money, more problems. It's funny, but, like, oh shit. When I just you're all right. Oh. You're fine. Even even like billionaires wake up with goo in their eye, you know, and are just like, God damn, dude. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're just gonna stay in bed against today. time in the in the. But anyway, it you shouldn't have to fear success and like fear money and things like that. And I think training anatomy. I don't speak for you, but like I think we're kind of trained with where we are in our comedy to like uh, to like be in this poor place. And yeah. I just, I, I just want to break think, out. Do you think that people are afraid of success because they're afraid of the change that will come with it? The I lifestyle change, the potential lifestyle change, the potential, uh, you know personality change like who or who like am I even be? consequences i know for me as a woman i've seen my ho- entire life every time a woman gets a shred of success people like leak her nudes and it's on the evening news you know what i mean like what are they there's offering? that sort of like yeah, some fucking money that. geez what's wrong with you guys my for free <laughs> no but it, it's like there are consequences to like breaking out to being next level, whether it means more lawyers, whether it means potential yeah. change in your environment or your friend group, or it means like Whereas, people like, trying to like sh- take you down. You grow comfortable in your daily grind, just doing your thing and like being happy with small successes. But maybe you're afraid of that next, like, well, what's going to change in my yeah. life when I'm I'm happy to be here? They say being like, rich. Maybe I'm, I'm happy famous. in my own misery. Even you know what I mean. Some people are just like happy in a relationship, in, in any endeavor in their life, like being sad i've had friends who just love 
that then, heartbreak. Okay, so it doesn't mean they're happy being hate sad. It, it means they're it means it, that's though. like their reliable thing that like they don't know that's any the one better. Constant. Yeah, so it's right. like me, their comfort bubble. Yeah, that it's what they've always had, so it's what they expect to have in the future. I'm not afraid of wealth or or that. I just for me, it's like, am I ready to deliver? Dave Neal, not but afraid of wealth. But you don't think that you have hangups? I think that I a, a lot, lot of, of people have hangups that come from sort of like a biblical origin like money is the root of all evil but it's actually love of money is the root of all evil right but people repeat it as money is the root of all evil and then you see people who are like ultra wealthy like jeff bezos or the waltons the people who own walmart who are just like ridiculously rich buying like their seventh yacht and like all of the people that they employ like have to live on food stamps. So I think there is a mentality that you have to break free of that says that money isn't evil. Like money corrupts people maybe, but it it doesn't necessarily mean that like you should avoid success because money will make you evil. Right. And and, and for me, it's like, look, I, I, when you see these rock stars, in, in, in just like comics and a lot of times it takes 10 to 20 years to like get that success so a lot of times it, it comes so gradually it's not like you know it, it's not like in the 90s when every when comics would get a four hundred thousand dollar development deal like you know like kevin yeah. hart and, bur- and burn through it in a day that's rapper shit that's what rappers do they get some fucking advance and they're like woo like there's it, it, almost it's almost never the case that you get that kind of money that fast so you can slowly like jake owen like that you know what i mean he wasn't he was, you know, just you know, you're open for some guys. So like, I don't think, I don't think you you get lost in like this that lifestyle, but you do have to have your guard up over like everybody wanting something from you. You even look at like people who are big on YouTube or even social media. They're just not every their whole inbox is blown up with people just wanting things from them because everyone we're in that society where everyone wants to build their own clout, and the only way to do that is by getting another person as a guest on. So you take like Joe Rogan, he doesn't, he's super super successful. He's a, he's one of the most successful media people of all time. If not, when it comes down to like, like how many people he's right, he's probably in Downloads today's and world views collected. He's like one of the biggest media outlets, more than Oprah. Yeah. If you look at like the world, and um, but he's got a team of three people, mm. and but he can't go out at night without being recognized everywhere he goes. So like there is that you do have to deal with like protecting your family because like for me, I would take photos with anybody, but like if I have like a, my wife and a child, then you have to be like a protector and be like, all right, I can't. I can't be doing what I would do for these for these audience members right. because they, you've got to like live that life too. I don't know. But then you see Jake Owen, he's got his five-year-old daughter and like, well, they're like going from the trailer to the stage. It's it's like probably not too it's it's aside from seeing a sea of a thousand hundred thousand people, it's not super rare like his lifestyle, I think. Yeah. If you kind of can create like the 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 human aspect of it like create you know daily rituals and things like that what do you think about his wife seeing all the panties flying on stage Dude, on he whoa, whoa 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 he just had a panty whoa. hanging out on his like g-string little no pun he literally had like a panty on his guitar uh, guitar and then like an- somebody whoa, threw whoa, another panty whoa. up and he like hung it over like the uh, i don't know backup singer i don't i don't he remember who yeah he it's like hung gross. it on the guy's mic that he was singing uh, it to <laughs> country country music uh uh, chicks are thirsty <laughs> they are thirsty for some fucking Dude, that santa clarita tea. valley fucking oh it was a crowd let me tell you oh it was i know a that crowd. crowd that lifted truck yeah they're like oh country gosh. boys but they have plugs in their ears there was only one trump uh well person that was supporting trump on their shirt but every time there was a silent moment in like in between songs there was a chant of usa which like the only time I've ever seen that <laughs> is funny. on TV at a Trump rally. <laughs> Not a political USA. place no, at all. USA. I used to have that in between every song. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, and it's I'm torn because like I love I love this country, but there's also something when like when you're chanting for something, you're you're also kind of chanting against something else. Could you imagine going to a Celine Dion concert and people are just like Canada, <laughs> Canada? You'd be like, what They're are like, they quiet doing? Down. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> Canada. Sorry, bud. Sorry, bud. Sorry, bud. Yeah. But if you haven't seen her, you gotta go. <laughs> Dude, I saw her at fucking Phil's Coffee. I sat right next to Celine Dion. Swear to God. Where's Phil's? 
Uh, the one on it's like on Melrose. Sunset? Yeah. Wow. No, oh. or, uh, maybe Sunset. Yeah, it's like in Hollywood. There's one on Sunset. Dude, I'm sitting there and I, I did that like quadruple take and I looked at her like 15 yeah. times. I was like, is that her? Is that her? Because she's small. She's dainty. Is she really? I thought she's she would have been super thin. tall. She's like, a, no, they're all all these all these huge singers. I mean, you you get your big Aretha Franklin types, but then you also get like you know uh, Christina uh, Aguilera, who's like a tiny person. Yeah, you know? she's only like five four or five six. But it's just something. crazy that that you can still slip in. I mean, Joe Rogan's so unique looking, you know, that he probably doesn't slip in. Although maybe if he puts a hoodie on or something, he can slip around. I saw that that Asian guy from um, uh, what the fuck uh, Silicon Valley. That guy can slip in. Like, I mean, what's his name? Something Korea. Jimmy, Jimmy O Yang. Yeah, and he's just walking around. You know. Oh well, like, yeah, he can I mean, walk around in Koreatown. Yeah, no problem. It's Hollywood. You can, you know. But anyway, um, my point. My point was is that the empathy. The I wanted to touch on empathy because I was thinking a lot about it. And as a comic, you have to build empathy with your audience. And basically, when I actually looked at the definition of what empathy is, it's like feeling for somebody else mainly because you you look or have like the same sort of vibe so it's easier to build empathy with like somebody who's like literally has the same eye color as you or the same profession rather than like you know if it's just say like a, a black teen you know what i mean so like when 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 with the the politics of like you know the cops with the cop shootings and, and everything that's happened it's like hard it's hard to like put yourself in someone else's shoes if you're not the same person. Like, who cares about an Amazon tribe? But like, if some shit goes down in Scandinavia, you go, oh, I look like that guy. So like, I don't know. It's just it's mm-hmm. hard. But then on stage, you build. You have to build empathy with an audience of mainly strangers right away. You have to make them feel for you in the jokes that you tell, which has been my greatest challenge. But do you ever think about that when you get on stage? Like, how how am I going to put all of these audience members in my like perspective? Is that something that even goes through your head or you just... Uh, I don't know just... if it goes through my head, like process by process or anything, but I, I definitely do try and build it. And one way to, like, to do that is to sit in those silent moments on stage and to get comfortable in it and just by making eye contact. Like if you have a, a moment where you really need the audience to get on board with you, just kind of sit in silence and like look in their eyes and be like, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? And sometimes you'll actually get an audience member who'll look back and you like, nod their head and in like silent agreement like yeah we're on more on board and by building that empathy and again i i got this all from a ted it's like clowning 101 is it clowning 101 oh that's like i've never done clowning but uh that's like the basis of it is literally just getting the audience to empathize with no, you. and i bring this up and i know i know for tasha's sake i don't want her to uh, spear me in the throat afterwards because we made the whole conversation about comedy but there's a connection and it's a it's like a experiment we do on stage where you're it's not like a one-on-one thing like say if you met someone out at a bar or like at a coffee shop or like first date th- those types of things like but it's the same the same techniques when you're on stage building empathy as like you want when you meet somebody and i don't want to confuse empathy for like making you know making yourself like into a victim victim like you can you, you can feel empathy for victims all day long so oh, i feel bad for you but that's sure. not real empathy like really just relating to somebody and that's what you want the most out of when you meet somebody in person like if you're on a first date and you're a high strung person and your fight or flight mode kicks in when you're like you're you know like me like if i go on a first date and, and get coffee with somebody i'm gonna scare them the hell away because yeah. i'm gonna be like huh and i do the same thing on stage with like when i'm not comfortable i'm gonna i'm gonna talk my way through the silences i'm gonna do all those things i'm just that's my weaker point is like the, that negative sort of fight or flight energy. I mean, it is negative. It doesn't work well. It, when you're releasing adrenaline, you're, you're, you're putting the other person on edge. Like, Jesus Christ. You know, ner- I mean, nervous energy can work sometimes, but you, you generally want, w- when you're on a first date or meeting somebody new, Taj, let me know if you think this is like, this makes any sense. But when you're meeting someone new, you're in a trial period for how life would be. But in normal life, you wouldn't be on fight or flight when you're hanging out on the couch with your boyfriend or girlfriend. But in that new moment, you are. So it's like... Well, there's a difference between like adrenaline that comes from the excitement of meeting somebody new, which probably is a mutual feeling if you're on a first date. Like yeah. probably both people are like a little excited, feeling some anticipation. Maybe this could too, be a good like, match. There's like so much underlying tension too. Like for one person, it's like, is this person going to let me fuck them? <laughs> and then the other person's like, is this person going to try and fuck me? <laughs> so there's like that weird tension plus you the nerves of just... You don't think they're just looking for soulmates? 
No, but there's always the potential because when you, even if you're out looking for a soulmate, eventually soulmates fuck. Soulmates gotta fuck. And sometimes that soulmate wants to fuck day one. You know what I mean? That's a great, that's like a bit. Soulmates might want to fuck on day one. Yeah. <laughs> the soulmate, that one fucks. I think first and foremost, people are just looking to see like, is this a connection? Do we sure, have a connection? Sure. But is like, this a match? There's always, there's that romanticized vision of what a real connection is. Like we have this, you know, rom-com style idea of what like true love can be you know like in the rain insane chemistry yeah, yeah boom bookshelf <laughs> broken you know what i mean <laughs> has to be matt mcconaughey yeah sure it was. Has and, to be. and then they spend you know the summer breaking up and then they get back together and you know he quits his law firm or whatever <laughs> but like there is the that romanticized they live idea on a boat. <laughs> that, yeah the, that it's just so so passionate right away that yeah maybe Maybe we'll fuck. So people on first date, I think like that is in the back of everyone's mind. If you're, I'm either gonna fuck or I'm gonna. If you're be fucked. If you're jittery, or (laughs) or, (laughs) if you're jittery, if you're nervous and have and a lot of adrenaline and and this and that, it can come off as needy though. Like there's nothing cooler than just being into somebody and excited versus like. Mm -hmm. So tell me about yourself. Oh my gosh! And sometimes you'll just end up a good a good person. You can be a good person and end of the date talking only about yourself. You know what I mean? And then the person goes, Jesus Christ, all he did was talk about himself. Yeah, well, maybe he was just fucking trying to give you all the information you need. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not, it's not healthy, but it's, I'm just saying that like, there's a reason, you know, you might want a glass of whiskey or something. Yeah, just well, cool that's out. why we try and tell people to like, take the stakes out of it. Like, don't put these expectations on somebody else like you're going to meet your soulmate. Just like, all right. Let's show up and see what happens. Maybe we get on, maybe we don't. Not a big deal. There's other fish in the sea. And try and take some of the stakes out of it so that you don't feel like this is the one and only. I feel like yeah. people do that with auditioning too, right? I think people Same should thing. like not even be looking like for a partner. Just let it happen naturally because that's when it's going to happen best is but, when you're just like, holy shit, I'm digging this person. Now when you're, you're at a bar, you're at a anywhere and you're just talking with someone and the conversation ends up going two hours and you're like, God damn, I want a nut in that person. <laughs> <laughs> the genetics of life. I like you. I must nut inside of you. <laughs> the fuck? That's what a guy thinks though. He's like, all right, I'm going to spend time with you. Okay, I can make yeah. a kid out of that. I can make a child with you. <laughs> the poetry of Channing Apodaca. <laughs> Apodaca. Um, no, that's right. And it's interesting. And look, I know it's <laughs> like, it's a tough conversation for me to bring up to compare country music, um, a mass shooting, and then how empathy should happen on first dates. But it's it's all about relating. And the best country singers, I mean, even the advice I've been given on stage, which I don't always take, but I've, had, I've been given the advice to lean into the audience. We talked before about Eliza Schlesinger. She hunches over on every joke, but she's yeah. hunching over because she's, she's like trying to reach out to them. I mean, it looks like horrible on camera, but everything she's doing is to like pull in that audience and you can't blame someone for that and it's like you use whatever like tribal techniques you can to bond with the other person because it's so fucking hard especially if you're doing like you know bill burr when he's doing the wilbur theater it's 1200 seaters but it's like it's a 1200 seater but you want to play to the back of the room in the guy in the front row and yeah you, and you'll like see good comics like who's the canadian guy that winks that i always t- i always fucking love this guy the skinny canadian guy and he winks and he was in uh, something about mary oh man dang it He's so fucking good. He's a laugh factory guy. I anyway, have no idea. I was sitting up in the up up in the balcony watching a show once, and he winked at me, and I'm like, I know he can't even see me. I'm sitting next to the spotlight, right. but he just had his places where he like would wink during the thing, and he had like nine spots where he would get everybody. And then I'm like, man, that's like, and while it might come off as like precalculated, there's just a certain uh, human thing that has to happen to like pull together a large group of people and make them well, feel I mean, like they're on you, a phone call with yeah, you. Yeah, could you imagine sitting on that Laugh Factory balcony, which like hangs over the stage and the comedian not look up once? Yeah. Wouldn't that be weird? Yeah. Like, any good comic's got to come out. And I think those people should probably be the first ones that you acknowledge because your face value is mostly going to be in the pit the entire night so they're gonna but you gotta like walk out and like to see that arena and it's almost like if you're pulling in the guy in the back row you get everybody from sure. him inward yeah like you've just like increased your spray of your audience <laughs> but it's the same is true when you meet someone like at a bar or whatever you don't if you meet if you want if you if, you, if there's a if there's a girl who makes eye contact with you at a bar right you walk in you're smiling you're with your boys you're having fun you can't just talk to that girl she's with the group you gotta right. you gotta dance for that group 
And then, and then, trust me, that girl will notice when you're making, you know, Brenda laugh. Yeah, if you're only talking to that one girl and you're like trying to pull her away from the you're group, the rest of the group is going to be like, "What the fuck is this guy doing?" Yeah, spend the seven minutes and compliment the other lady's clutch. Yeah, introduce yourself to everybody and just try and get on. That way, you look like not a guy with an agenda. Yeah, but just a guy who's nice and like is making some friends while and he's it, out. And it comes off creepy if I if I like transcribe this in the in the feminist subreddit. They would be like, ah, oh, you fucking creep with your pickup artist strategies. It's about creating this fishbowl of an environment where everyone feels safe. And you're in an environment where you might not feel safe. I mean, you go up to somebody. We were leaving the concert last night, and that one lady was holding her daughter, that four-year-old daughter. It's just 100,000 people leaving a concert. That daughter was fucking horrified because there's just 100,000 people running sure. around drunk. And it's like, you just forget how like a bundle of energy we all can be. And that can be like enough for someone to be like, oh, I'm just going to stay with my people. I already know. I've already screened them. They're fine. We have good credit scores versus being like, hey, I'm Dave. Nice to meet you. Oh, hey, what's going on? Oh, what are you guys doing? What are you celebrating? Bachelorette party? Sweet. How long is it going to last? Two years, we got money on this, and you just start fucking with them. This, Not fucking with this them. Hypothetical, just this hypothetical. Having a conversation, just being normal. I'm telling you, if you see a bachelorette party, you pull. You, yeah, but why does it have to be a bachelorette party? It's probably just a group of friends out having a nightcap okay. on a Thursday or Friday night. Tasha and Channing, you guys are part of a bachelorette party, okay? I'm going to turn my mic off. Why am I there? Bit. Hold on, Channing. <laughs> okay, you're there. Ch- Channing's a hot chick that I, that I want to fuck, okay? Tasha's the the bride, okay? She's the bride to be, and then I go up to Channing and I go, Channing, hey, and I start talking to you. Go, so, do you even like this chick over here? And you, you know, do you think it's gonna last? Well, you mean my best friend Tosh? Of course, I think it's gonna last. So what? Like, what do you give it nine months? You want to bet on it? Oh my god, who the fuck is this asshole? <laughs> Do you want to bet 50? Why does he have chocolate spinach? In his <laughs> <laughs> Do you like chocolate? <laughs> you want to go to some chocolate fondue? And then I go, you want to bet 50 bucks that they won't make it to a year? And you go, no. And I go, see? And I don't know. I'm just saying there's that, that might be a harsh example. You, but that's some, like, that's emotional negging. Or yeah. I guess negging is only emotional. Yeah, but it's also that's, like kidding and it makes you part of the family. I don't How think about I let's wouldn't give go another up. another example where you're not a jerk. How I wouldn't go up and immediately insult the reason that they're out that night. That sounds like a lose lose yeah. sort of. Well, yeah. sometimes you might get slapped and you might nut in somebody. You know I mean? <laughs> <laughs> to, to use Channing's terminology, sometimes you might throw a nut in somebody's. You might throw a day one nut. That sounds like a <laughs> that sounds like a country song. Day one nut. <laughs> Everybody just looking for that day. It'd be one like some nut. some construction innuendo, some like homework, like bolts and nuts. But he's actually like, dude, that's a fucking great song. That's a good song. Day one nut. Here's the thing with country music is like anybody can write a cut. It's I, I mean, I'm not kidding. It's on my bucket list to write a hit country music song. I'm not working towards it at all. But Can you play guitar? No. No, I don't do anything. But day one nut might be Channing and Dave. Like we might be day one. I mean, can you imagine day one nut? And it's a and it's a song and we're like That's walking. That's a little at, too overt. No, we're walking out of a Home Depot and we got <laughs> we got <laughs> bolts and we got hammers and we say all that and then we say and now and it's the day and i don't i don't know man i'm I'm, yeah you don't know yeah good try but but channing this is the type of shit where she writes me off where i go i gotta write day one nut and i gotta get that royalty check buy tasha something and say this is from day one nut (laughs) which you didn't believe in in episode 341 yeah you want dave to be uh uh financially successful yeah yeah if he came home with a Big old briefcase full of day Publishers one nut cleared. money. Are you gonna <laughs> <laughs> day one nut money? <laughs> There's no way you're gonna be like, get that money out of here. I'm like, no, Can I get I'll this? leave my words. Whatever works, whatever works. Can I get this but money in I singles? don't believe in day but one. But he nut. becomes he becomes the um, what's that song? Old Town Road. He becomes the Old Town Road of Day One Nut. And he's everywhere. And there's like Day One Nut remix. And Dave's in a kindergarten classroom singing Day One Nut. But this is, he's at like the NHL All-Star Game. This is what I want to s- I need to clip shit like this for like writing for like a sitcom episode. Where they, they, they we're walking down the street like properly. We're with Tasha's parents. And some guy's like, Day One Nut. And, and yeah, and, and that's all Dave has though. Like he doesn't even, he's not even like, yeah, but you know, listen to the other stuff too. He's just right back. He's like, Day One Nut. <laughs> and I, I, I try to on day two, boom! Yeah, day one. <laughs> I don't know. There's something there. There's some legs there. There's uh, something there. I don't know. It's interesting. You know, it's like it's it's funny to me. You know, in a relationship because like there's a lot of times I'll say things that Tasha will just 
like I, things I've said my whole life. Like I, I don't have an example off the top of my head, but I'll say like a term, like it's like a frat term, like just a bro term, and she'll look at me like, "Who the fuck are you?" But like nut, we don't work nut too much into the vocabulary, so we might have to bring that one back. Thank you that, very much for that training. You're welcome. <laughs> Appreciate. It. I haven't said that in a while. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like I'm in high school again. Yeah. Anyway, so moving on. Uh, yeah. So that's 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 my thought with empathy is that like. It's just something I I want to, I need to keep back on my forefront to realize I look like I can look like a prick when I meet people, but on the inside and again I don't need to, I'm not saying this for like to win anyone over, but on the inside I'm like oh I just want to be loved. I'm Boone. I'm a basset hound on the inside. I just want to, my my belly rubbed and I want to be loved, but I, but I do look like you know what I mean. And like it's easy for someone. Tom to, Cruise with Down syndrome. Yeah, we know. <laughs> uh, it's easy uh, to be the giant fat guy on stage and get that first laugh it's easy to be the the chick with one arm you know what i mean like c- comedy is like it's a, it's the same thing when like with like when you see like a homeless dude with like a you know boil on his leg like i give you a buck you know what i mean i don't know you're both looking at me like i'm a fucking yeah we're trying to figure out where you're going with this yeah me too <laughs> so i wanted to ask you channing um if you would host the next mimosa show but no, don't, wow! But don't do any material. I wanted to, cha- wow. wanted to challenge you to, to just do crowd work. Um, I I'll be the first to say I think I'm a terrible host because I'm not a happy person. I'm not like an energetically. Uh, don't do like it. you're very. Don't, no, don't I'll energy. do it. Just do like just do like six or eight minutes up top. Just crowd work. Just talk to these fucks. Okay, that's it. We can do railroad style after that. We don't have to have. Why you. are you challenging him to this? Because I think it'd be fun to watch. I think it'd be fun to see him go go uh, just talk to people, and that's a good place too because it's, you know the most of the show like early on though I think for for any show like hosting on that shows it's it's easy just to like try to talk to the audience. But I didn't I didn't want to do it because I've done it a few times there and I yeah. was trying to work on some shit. But I could do it. It sounds like a cop out for me, but I just thought you know since this you, was your surprise that you had for me. Yeah. <laughs> So what? disappointed. <laughs> this surprise this sucks. Burden? <laughs> <laughs> this is not a burden. It's a it's a workout. I'm, no, I'll it's do like it. I'm trying to get, it's like doing uh, try some CrossFit. Sure, you know. Okay, there you go. Yeah. There you go, folks. June 23rd, this Sunday. Janie's gonna be. Uh, hosting That's this Sunday. Show. Yeah. This come. Oh, no, here comes not the tomorrow. No, today's Sunday. Right. Today's, today's Father's, Father's Day. Day. Would you call Happy Father's Day? What'd you do for Father's Day? Um, I text my dad. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I I'm not gonna make it to go visit him which kind of i feel bad because i was able to go visit my mom on mother's day but i made him a promise to take him out for beers and to go bowling oh, there you go. Ooh, and he, and he nice. just goes you can bowl <laughs> <laughs> it's like he i'm not bowling he doesn't know you bowl oh, oh he knows so you made him a promise to do the thing that you love the most yes there you go he doesn't like bowling he's uh he doesn't really like anything so he's one of those guys like i can't get him any kind of a gift if i if ever i'm gonna like gift him with something it's got to be dodgers or king's tickets but we've done that so many times i'm trying to think outside i'm trying to like go do something with him you know what i mean and to show him this new thing that for the past year i've been practicing yes people i bowl 232 pickwick bowl uh (laughs) you know catch me there tuesdays and thursdays but but my dad's the same him. way. My dad, I've had so many gift fails from my dad. Yeah. And I'm like, really, I love to like really be thoughtful about my gift giving and give people something that like I think they will love. And so many things that like I know my dad is into, but he just like never opens the gift. Do you have your phone account. on you? No. Call him over up. Th- he's over there. Get, if I get your phone, will you call no, him up? No, I'm not calling him We just him call him and wish him a happy... No. Listen, because here's the thing. You you put all this time and energy into gifts. That's Should we how, all call our dads? Well, my phone's on live stream and I called my... Sta- I'm gonna nice call, I called my stepdad last year and it was really... It was a really nice... I remember that. Was I actually it? listened to it. Wasn't that nice? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was like... It's... it's it's it, And my point is, it's tough to be like very specific with giving the love to like your dad. Is it easier with moms? But Tasha, do you have you have you have you have you made that call where you give like a specific thing? Could you do that? I don't know what you mean. Could you call your dad and find a moment where he was a great dad and tell him? Could you do that? That's a very uncomfortable. Our family doesn't operate that way. I'm the same I, way. I couldn't be like, hey, I think you're a really great. He'd be like. What the fuck's wrong with you? Well, yeah. I'm here with a stick poking at what's uncomfortable to you. Why do what's comfortable? It wasn't comfortable for me to call my stepdad and tell him that and not try not to cry. It's not comfortable. But well, who are we as humans? If like, you're, no offense, but like your dad never opened the, uh, the the bat house that you got him. Do you know what I mean? He never opened the kombucha <laughs> kit that you got him. 
Give him a call and tell him that moment that you, you, you know you made. He made you. You don't have to do it on air. I'm not trying to do this for ratings. Although if, if we put it on the Patreon, maybe people can, <laughs> you know what I mean. But you could do it on air. You could just call him and say, "Hey, Dad, I love you." And uh, you know, I'm not trying. I'm not trying to do this for you. I'm just saying. What? We, what? If uh, okay, assuming your dad listened to a, a very specific clip of the podcast, we don't need him listening to the you know finger bang episodes or whatever we talk about. But, or the um, one first day nut. First day, <laughs> nut. day one nut. Day one, day one <laughs> nut. Your dad's like, well, actually, Tasha, you were a day one nut. Yeah. <laughs> what did you? Oh, how great would that be? You guys are gross. If you found out you were a day one nut, my parents were married for eight years before they had me so I i'm a doubt third it. child so <laughs> slow moving sperm uh my sister might be a day one nut they had her when they were 16 oh, what yeah. really i wish i could make day one nut the title of this episode but i stopped doing stupid named titles because they're not good for searchability well you still have uh, chocolate broccoli so <laughs> chocolate spinach <laughs> yeah, whatever it was. there's like a chef who's like i wonder if there's any podcast on how to make chocolate <laughs> 45 minutes in when are they gonna get to the good stuff 45 minutes day, in, one, just <laughs> day one <no. laughs> oh man listen i'm telling you right now if this shit if you don't like these types of conversations never come to a show of mine. <laughs> i don't give a fuck we've had one listener and in, in beth i love you i'm happy that you're you know whatever but she was she was mad that i put all my solo episodes on the private patreon because those ones she liked but i'm like look this is the type of shit where like i want my friends and and, and family on on the pot fam- i mean you say family but you know my close friends tasha i want i want th- these conversations to be the one the reason people want to come hang out with us mm-hmm. and do other things anyway that was a sidetrack but tasha what would you tell your dad uh like a specific thing yeah hmm because look like you a can't specific even, you, memory of him being a really good dad yeah my dad, my dad's a good dad. My dad's always a good dad. But but specifics are really okay. Good I've got be- something that's coming to mind. I had like a, um, like a class play or something. I don't know exactly what it was. It was some sort of like class presentation, and I I think we we must it must have been like a forest i don't i have no clue what it was really i have, i just know that we were all supposed to have costumes for like a specific character that we were and for whatever reason like at my house it was put off till the night before which is kind of the usual we were a busy household my mom worked a ton my dad worked a ton but um we realized it was the night before and i needed a, co- a bee costume and my dad fashioned a bee costume for me out of a trash bag stuffed with newspaper, (laughs) yellow electrical tape, coat hanger, wire, wire coat hanger, um, wings with like a pantyhose over them and like a headband with, um, uh, pipe cleaners. I mean, it was a really, really good costume that my dad just like whipped up for me because he knew I needed a costume the next day. Can I get your school. phone out and tell him that? No. Come on. Uh, I'll tell him later. You promise? Yeah. All right. I'm going to report back to the audience if you told him or not. Yeah. I think you should. Yeah. Now, what about you, Channing? You have a dad moment? What yeah. You? I've always thought. I think last year when you called your dad, it made me start thinking of that moment. And uh, I remember, again, my family was super last minute too. And that like kind of ingrained in my DNA. So I was supposed to do this book report and have this book read and I didn't oh, read I'm it. getting anxiety listening. <laughs> oh, We're all going to dream even, about yeah. college. Read that last page. No, no, like, this was, uh, <laughs> I think I was like seven, probably in second grade. And so the, I was supposed to read this Goosebumps book and I didn't read it. And the book report was due the next day. I was supposed to have oh, it done. Gosh. And I, like I had to go to my dad and tell him like, hey, I didn't read this book, I didn't do the book report, and I thought he was going to be so mad and like so disappointing, or so disappointed, and I was going to get in trouble. But instead, he took the day off of work, and like sat me in his bed with him, like we just like kind of this like you know bear hug style, and read me the entire Jeez. book in a day. I'm gonna cry, dude. Like, and then I remember one like literally like looking up at my dad and he's not like an animated guy he's not you are tearing up i am tearing up i'm a i'm a softy for this shit and uh he he's no theatrical type person he's very blunt and very bland but he was like getting into this story and he's doing voices and he's telling it and i remember like looking up and watching him and like seeing this different side of him he was very like nurturing and loving and then uh we like halfway through the book we fell asleep and took like a two hour nap together, like him just holding me. And, 
And then we woke up, finished the book, and like not only was I just like, holy shit, this was the best day. Just me and my dad. I was also like, dude, my dad's the fastest reader alive. <laughs> <laughs> because when you're little, it takes you like two months to read Goosebumps, you know what I mean? Despite the fact that the words are, you know, billboard size <laughs> on each page. It's but braille, yeah, it's I, a Braille cover. <laughs> yeah, it always stuck out to me like, damn, I remember that day. Wow, that's a special moment. You should tell him that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, because he, he remembers it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it's interesting you know and it's like as old as we fucking feel like we're getting we got old people they're old people and they're not gonna be around for too long i never had that with my real dad i never had a moment i never had like a thing so you know what i mean like i didn't know him so it's kind of like i i developed that with my stepdad but like my mom replaced a lot of those sorts of memories but it's interesting for me when i see people like both of you guys who you're i mean both your 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 parents are are they happy are they together they're together um you don't know if they're happy I know they've had a ton of issues. Like, I mean, that was a whole thing in our family for a good year. You know, just the monotony of a 20-year marriage yeah, and not doing anything. I think it's easy in a long-term relationship to just sort of like fall into... Um, like a trap of what's yeah. comfortable, you know, 100%. like that, you know what you can get away with and you just like do the bare minimum and you're not like going out on a limb I, it, to like impress your significant other or mm -hmm. to like make them happy. You know, it, you, you stop courting the person when you've yeah. been together for 20 years totally. and that's I mean, you so stop important. doing it after you've been together for three years. Yeah. Yeah, um, you, you want stop. you want your partner to feel loved and appreciated and valued and yeah. thought of and special, and those things happen less and less in a yeah. long term relationship because you're just comfortable with each and other. You pull focus from what the what what the original like love is, and a lot of times like we have to give our parents that whole generation like sort of um, the benefit of the doubt. They were they didn't have the so the um, literature that we have for like how to communicate. They mm -hmm. think their the parent their parents were shitty shitty World War Two like so like your dad couldn't uh, couldn't always be the dad who like read you goosebumps he saw a window where he was like I can do this yeah but, his like, dad was a Korean War vet truck driver so geez. like he didn't have that at all and your dad and your dad uh, was a c correctional officer mm -hmm. so just naturally the world around him is very hard oh yeah hardened world I, I you know I was reading this thing on the drive home last night and I gotta go get it because it's relevant to the conversation so let me just step out first. go get it grab yeah. your phone you might decide to call your dad. <laughs> uh, go get it there. shake your ass when you get up so we can get some views on youtube i was talking to channing um yeah it's crazy right i mean it's like it, these conversations they don't have to it's not all like they're, they're not sad there there's something that when when you talk about how tough it can be like tasha talks about how tough it can be to um sort of like have those like honest conversations with your parents it's like well those are the ones that need to be had mm -hmm. when i first met her parents we were flying into cincinnati and i was like you know we had been dating for six months or so and it's pretty serious you know start not serious in like a dull way but like we we, we got going pretty quick um day one nut <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and um and i was like i'm gonna, i was like yeah what how do you greet your parent i was like how am i gonna greet your mom i was like should i give her a hug and, and, and Tasha was like, she's, don't give her a hug. I was like, what are you talking about? I was like, I'll give her a hug. You know, like, we've talked on the phone. I'll give her a hug. And then, um, and then uh, I was like, I'm definitely gonna give her a hug. And then as soon as I met her, I just stuck my hand out to shake her hand. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? But now we hug. Uh, and it's, and it's, but it's like, do we, we hug and her, her and, and her families, they are very close in a lot of ways. They travel together and go on vacations and they're close in a lot of ways. And, and I'm not saying my family is any better because my family's got their own hangups, but yeah. like. I don't know. It's just like if, if it's a hard conversation to have, lean into that and go, how do I, why is it hard for me to share with some of the most important people of my life the way I feel? And why, right. is, why can gratitude be so, be lost in the throat? I don't know if it's the throat or wherever it is, but you can sometimes find a specific place where you get choked up. Hard enough for both of you to share your story with me, a guy that ve you're very comfortable with. I know exactly that throat thing you're talking about. I've I get done it all it. the time. I feel like you need like a chakra unblocking or something for that. I, I've mm -hmm. done it with um when I was with the w one of the few times I went to Codependence Anonymous. I when I was going through my Kip Moore struggles, I couldn't tell strangers how like the way the way I was suffering and the pain. And just by just by the neurons of like just by like taking it from my brain and trying to bring it out through my vocal cords, I suffocated and I couldn't breathe. And I was like. I just had this moment where, I, and that, that's how it can be sometimes when you want to tell somebody you love why you love them. We don't have that issue that much, 
But you might. I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't know what goes through your brain. I'm good. I, I always tell you, Tasha, the only thing I ever want for my birthday for Christmas is a love letter. And I don't mean some long, dreamy, exactly shirtless right. Matthew McConaughey and the beach. You can write one of those. But I just want one of those day one nut, keep it quick, fun love letters. I don't think I've ever gotten one from you. I mean, I've really begged for him. That's uh, not true. I gave you a love letter. I left her a love letter underneath a piece of chocolate in the fridge because I knew she was going to go for that chocolate. So I left her a nice little love letter. I wrote it on a, a paper towel. What did you say? I don't know. It was, just, it was a very appreciative gratitude. Gratitude is very important. And it's one of those things, you know, the old tropes like, well, why don't you say you love me? I, well, I told you last time I loved you and it's the same until then. You know what I mean? It's like, no, no, no. It's a daily reminder. <laughs> you don't have to, it's not a daily reminder with your parents, but there are certain days where, where th- that's your out. If it ain't on Father's Day, when is it? If you can't sit, tell him that on Father's Day, when are you going to tell him that? Yeah. Give a call. Give him a call. The I'm not going to give him a call right now. I've already titled the podcast Tasha's Calls Her Dad on Air. <laughs> you haven't. <laughs> so I need you yeah, to do Dave it. Dave did it last year. I think you should do it this year. I'll get on the I'll get on the phone. I'm not going to do it on the on the podcast. Just call him up no. if, if if you don't like how it goes, no we'll delete it. No means no. <laughs> wow. Wow. Janie, you're up. Call your dad. <laughs> really? Do you want to do it? Let me say this first. Uh, <laughs> we were talking about my parents. And whether or not they're happy. And we talked about this the other day when we had that uh, marketing meeting together. Um, now that my dad's retired, they're using cannabis. And I know that that has like brought them closer together in a way. Like my dad's mellowed out. He's opened up more. And that's I amazing. think that's actually helped their relationship. It's incredible. Isn't it crazy? Because I think that's actually helping with like empathy for both of them to look at each other and be like, well, I know how this person's feeling now after all these years and there's still that love there. Dude, it's all... Well, because we have like a societal sort of expectation of how we're supposed to behave, right? And that's especially true for men from a young age. It's ingrained in them that like showing feelings is not allowed. Yeah. And so they have, they spend their whole lives like not, not knowing, not developing like the muscles on, on how to communicate effectively and not just like, you know, sappy stuff, but just the simple things like you would never, or for me anyway, can I read this actually? What are you doing? I don't even know if I'm calling the right number. Oh, I don't this, is great. this is not funny. No, I'm not calling your dad. I'm calling mine. I just don't know if I've got, I might've dealt the wrong <laughs> number. She got so mad. If it's the wrong number, I'll just give a random person. But then again, they might not want to answer. If they yeah, they're going to see the Kentucky area. Code. Hey, hello. Hey, who's it? who am I speaking with? Uh, the old geezer. <laughs> Happy Father's Day. I wasn't sure I called the right number because I called from Tasha's phone. And I was like, I might have called the wrong number. And then we were afraid you weren't going to pick up. <laughs> with Kentucky. Yeah. Well, with who, who's calling me from Kentucky? <laughs> we're passing the phone around on our podcast with okay. Tasha and my other friends. So we're just calling our dads and wanted to wish you a Happy Father's Day. Well, Happy Father's Day to all the fathers that are listening to this wonderful it's, ca- podcast and some of them might not know their fathers yet so <laughs> <laughs> are you at an antique it's still day one are you at an antique uh, car show no just came from an antique car show where your mom's car won first place wow, wow. that's right and, wh- and what's the make and model what are we talking is this 1961 the- thunderbird wow so she's gonna yes. have a little uh uh ribbon she's gonna wear around town now well, she's already going to take the picture of me and Uncle Pete having uh, the trophy and, and putting it on Facebook so the rest of the world can be jealous of her. What did your uh, What did your dad do on Father's Day? What was his sort of... He said, and his five sons would give him uh, either a drawing of something they did or something we made for him. And he did not cut the grass. We cut the grass. We did any of the chores that he would do on that day. So acts of service, basically. That's, yeah, that's the that's what gifts. fathers would want more than anything. But that's more a, peace and quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, acts of service. I mean, acts of service, it's a tangible way to show you know, you know, your appreciation for someone. I'm, I'm 4,000 miles across the country. So say I'll, I'll wash the car when I make it back. <laughs> if okay. that helps. But um, that's the thing is, is the coupon. Cause see a million kids give coupons. But those coupons seem to self-destruct within 24 hours after being issued. <laughs> yeah, they did. There's, there's never been a parent that has ever been able to find that coupon uh, <laughs> within after 24 hours of being written. So. Yeah, it's like printing money in the Depression. You've got like a wheelbarrow of coupons. <laughs> that, that's what you think. It's your one loaf of bread. <laughs> you know, a lifetime right, full of exactly. back rubs. That's what it is. So, so uh, 
if you give me a coupon, it's gonna have to be like carved in stone. Yeah, we'll uh, uh, we'll put it well electronically, so we can't put it in the spam folder. Or, but. or we have a bunch of listeners that that I have proof that you said you'd wash the car. Yeah, oh, that's right. They're gonna hold you accountable. Okay. Well, I don't know if I'm gonna be making it back till uh, early October, but just because the wait time. I know it'll probably be another car by then. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys doing for the rest of the day? Uh, we're actually driving around now, looking at real estate that Uncle Pete is with, and they ever wanted to move to warmer weather, this would be the spot. Nice. And so we're currently doing that. We may go out to Gray's Four Corners to test the ice cream Lovely. that they sell out there and um, as a wrap-up, and then we're going to go home and chill out. Sound, um, sounds great. Well, actually, we're getting some fish, too, and we're going to have a fish dinner. And Jeez. So that, Oh my gosh, so, that's a lot of good food. It's a fancy yep, father's yep. day. Yeah, I wish I could. So, <laughs> that's where I wish we could just teleport there. That's the hardest well, part is not being around for like the good family dinners. That's definitely the hardest. I know. That's why I start better than anybody else. Those guys can zoom to anywhere they want. Yeah, we got to right? build that. <laughs> yep. yep well, we we're, haven't discovered it yet to do it. So. I'm I I'm I'm gonna make Tasha call her dad because uh, she's got to hang up with uh, phone calls. So okay. I'm gonna make her. But right. happy well, Father's Day and have a know, great happy Father's Day to Tasha's father. All right, I'll, we'll All we'll right. let him know. And uh, thanks All for right. being a great dad. And uh, yeah. I know you're still working on one kid in high school, so you're you're still on full time yeah. dad duties. But you you've, that you've that gone from the 80s, yeah. the 90s, 2000s, and 2010s. You've got yeah. four decades of dad spirit. So. Right. So the award goes to you. You win it. Thank you. All right, I'll talk I'm to you later, Luke. Going into diapers as the you, come out of diapers. <laughs> I know. Seriously, you really <laughs> supposed to take a few decades for yourself. <laughs> Might be too late. Well, thanks for calling. All right, love you, man. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Yeah, Bye. Bye. What a sweet guy, old man, Luke. He's so sweet. Met him when I was uh, ten or eleven. Yeah, tried to sabotage his date with my mom. <laughs> What'd you do? I don't know. I just like hid in a hamper and I was going to scare him when he showed up. There was like a hamper and I put coats like, on. <laughs> some stupid 10 year old boy scheme. Yeah, I've been waiting for hours. It'd be like 4 30. I'm like, what if he comes early? He's not coming till 7. I'm just sitting in a hamper. <laughs> it's amazing how. So, how... did you scare him? No. I probably like fell asleep or something. <laughs> he shows up. Like, oh. Yeah. It's amazing how kids our age, when we grew up, could just sit in their own thoughts in a hamper for hours. Yeah. Just being like, I'm gonna get him. You know what you I know? remember? I remember a few times when he had to di- when he disciplined me, and I was like, I was like, Mom, you're gonna let this? And I didn't say this because I didn't swear, but in my head, I'm like, you gonna let this motherfucker <laughs> take my video game just like that? After all we've done, she was so relieved to have someone else yeah. to handle the discipline for one, yep. and also probably a little worried. It'd be like if I walked, if it'd be like if I met Tasha and like the and like was kind of like strict with the dog, you know? I mean, that's a weird example, but it's like it's like okay. My no, mom, my mom realized there was a guy that could like sort of have her side, you know, and like that help. have her back. Yeah, and when it some, comes to discipline. And Luke, Luke had to learn a lot too because he didn't have he had two daughters before, so he didn't have any sons. So I never, I never did. He never did like a lot of the fatherly things with me that he would have wanted to do. But he sort of enabled me to to like lead my path because yeah. I wasn't a car guy, I wasn't all these things. But like now with his two youngest sons, my half brothers, Jack and Jameson, Boy Scouts building things, car shows, see all the things that he was able to like have his own son, sons. Not that like, I feel like any less of a son of his, Yeah, but it was, well, just you different. also can't like, if you met him when you were 10, by the time he became your stepdad, yeah. that's like, he doesn't have a, a boy that he raised. He's got a young man. Right. Yeah, you know I mean? Who's you already, already developing have... these And when we look back at a 10 year old, we go, that's a child. But at, when you're a 10 year old, you have like, laid the foundation of your personality and very, your wants and likes very by that. Very much so. But I'll say this I grew up with my mom and my sister in a very quiet household. Luke, uh, he owns a heating and air conditioning company on the island. You know, the island is like 70,000 people, 50 to 70,000 people. So that's a lot of people. You can't go to a, a coffee shop, a diner, a restaurant without him knowing half the people anywhere he goes and and not only does he know them hey how are you doing like a very positive vibe and i i remember me in fifth grade being like i want to be that i want to be the guy who like can walk in and know people and be like that because it brings positive energy to the room whereas my mom would just be kind of quiet and like that just wasn't her thing which is fine too but when you see the thing that like you want to be then you like try to live up to that and i think that's what kind of like dad's help provide anyway that's enough for me so tasha what do you think (laughs) 
make a phone call. We're gonna no, go straight I'm not to Channing. Making a phone All right, call right okay, now. I'm not gonna pressure you. I've asked you four times. You're not gonna do it, Channing. Did you want to make? You don't have to if you don't want to. I'll give it a shot. This okay, will be I'm interesting. Gonna, I'm going to turn off our microphones when we get going here, and you can have the floor. And uh, then this again, if it, if it's not how you wanted it to go, we'll just cancel it. It, it probably won't be. No, um, don't, no, don't, don't make we'll it a see. thing, Channing. It doesn't have to be a thing. Should I call his cell phone or the house? I would never make someone do this if I wasn't good friends with them. So, if podcast listeners don't think this is cringeworthy. This is just friends pushing friends to do shit. Let's see if he even answers. That's all right if he doesn't. Oh, he's going to answer. Right, we'll, we'll turn it ourselves. He could just be asleep with Jerry Springer on in the background. Hello? Hey. What are you doing? I made myself something to eat. Oh, yeah? What'd you make? Nothing yet. Oh, you're about to. Yep. Cool. Um... I just want to call and say happy Father's Day. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so right now, I'm, I'm doing a live Father's Day podcast with some of my friends. They have a big podcast. And uh, is it cool if you're on it real quick? Yeah. Yeah? Um, so we're talking about Father's Day and talking about appreciation. And I wanted to say thanks for being a great dad and to share... Uh, we're talking about like certain landmark memories that we had. Do you remember this one time when I was in like second grade, I had a book report that I was supposed to do and I didn't do it. I didn't even read the book and you stayed home from work that day and you read the entire book with me and you're in mom's bed. I don't remember it. <laughs> you don't remember that? No, I remember when you were in the second grade, you threw up on me in a grocery store. <laughs> Well, you you read the entire book like in one day, and then we like ended up taking this epic nap together and finishing the book. And I remember thinking like how great that memory was, and uh, I remember thinking that you were like the best reader on the planet. I was so impressed with your reading skills. <laughs> that, that had to be the only book I've ever read. <laughs> <laughs> I don't well, even remember it. <laughs> it was some shitty Goosebumps book. Um, but yeah, you were like super animated. I never seen you be like theatrical, and uh, it, it it's always stuck out to me. So I wanted to say thank you. That was a cool memory to have. Uh, yeah, I was telling my buddy Dave here. He's the host of this podcast, and he started tearing up. Really? Yeah, you want to like insult him or anything? <laughs> um, you guys made it easy for us. Huh? Because you and your sisters made it easy for us. You think so? Yeah. Is there any memory that you have, like, from any one of us that sticks out as, like, a parenting landmark? Or for you and mom? Oh, no. I can't just pinpoint one. I mean, there's so many. There's yeah. lots. Yep. Nothing, not one just stands out. Hmm. All right. Not one. Well, what are you guys doing later? Nothing. I'm watching uh, the U.S. Open golf. All right. It's a perfect Father's Day then, huh? No it's kids? <laughs> no kids, just golf? That's it. Right on. All right. Well, I just wanted to call and, and say all that stuff. All right. All right. I Thank love you. you. Bye. Love you guys. Bye. See ya. Oh, that was sweet. Wow. Aww, that was so great. That was sweet. He was deflecting. He, he 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 gave him a nice compliment. He was like, "Yeah." He, he probably hasn't it. heard anything like that in a while. You know, it's it's it's. But that's it's, well, it's puts a lot on on our parents to like hear that, and it's a little weird for them. They they're uncomfortable with but it that's because gonna that sit generation with is not raised with that sort of like communication yeah. skill that Especially we're developing. Like my dad, like his, they came from Spanish speaking New Mexico, and they moved to Southern California, and like it was such a lifestyle change. My grandpa was like a hard ass individual like abusive emotionally shut off war vet truck driving drinking you know 
just football wrestling dad. So it's, you have to be that way to to push down the um, emotions of humanity. You have to. I was thinking, looking at like we're fucking well, we're stripping th- this this paint, right? That's what you got to do. You got to be you got to be stripping the paint of all the hardened experiences get, to get to the true emotions. Now you've got your dad who's watching the U.S. Open by himself, probably thinking how nice it was to get a specific memory from his son. Like, oh, he does know I did the best I could. Mm-hmm. That's all you're trying to tell your parents is I know you did the best you could. I'm not saying it was bad. You did you did the best you could, and here's how I remember that. And he doesn't even remember it because to him, you know, he, he's probably like dads are so busy, just wanted to work and make sure they're bringing home enough money and all the stupid things they have to be worried about. That like your memory of him is the thing he did for free with you. Yeah. Touch time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks for calling him. Yeah. Does yeah. it feel good? Are you glad you did? Or are you just like, yeah? yeah I, it was funny. Like as the phone started ringing i felt that nervousness in my legs we were holding each other's hands i was nervous, <laughs> I was nervous for you i mean he's not so closed off especially now and especially like because i've become so open just like doing comedy like you kind of get rid of that fear you do um but it, he's not so closed off that we that was like the craziest thing but i, I definitely haven't told him anything like that in a long time yeah. at least i didn't have a real a real conversation with my father till he was like on his deathbed yeah you know like i didn't have a real talk with him till he was on his way out and that's that was enough you know that's enough catalyst to be like all right well this has to happen now it doesn't have to be that way mm-hmm. and that, that situation is specific because like, i didn't know him really before he was sick but like it doesn't have to be that way and like and of course tasha your dad knows you care about him and all these other things. So like, I'm not putting you on the spot here or I've tried to at least, but again, it's, I understand maybe next year, maybe episode 485, <laughs> you'll call your dad, but it's, um, it's, well, I'm not as practiced as you guys. I'll definitely start crying right now. You think so? Absolutely. I can already feel my throat. So you're yeah. nervous. I was yeah. kind of holding it back. Yeah. I yeah. forgot about that story that he told too, being in the grocery store and I threw up on him. I was, he had to pick me up from school. He was super, or I was super sick. He took work off again, came and picked me up, and we're in the middle of the grocery store buying Gatorade. I, like, I remember a red Gatorade, and I just, like, I'm sitting in the, you know, the shopping cart facing him, and just like, <laughs> projectile, and I he had to take his hat off, I think, and like, to try and catch the fuse. I love that all of your stories fuck with his vacation time. <laughs> yeah, dude had no vacation time. He, he grinded it out like seven days a week. Yeah. Slinging tires. And that's all they could do. And now yeah. we're kind of like in a world where like we need to, to know that like they did that for their family. And yeah, and, they, and, it, and, it, uh, and it, not to beat a dead horse, but it does become sort of like who, who wouldn't be hardened if all of their work goes to like just keep the family happy. And like it's hard to like keep that relationship with your spouse when like you kind of just like driven apart economically economically you know you're driven apart because you both have specific tasks you need to do i don't know it can be very i can't i mean i can't imagine how tough it is like right now my mom works with my stepdad and there's a lot of bitterness because she's got to like pick up a lot of his like flaws with running a business she has to like you know sweep all that shit up but at least the the byproduct is a healthy business that they kind of can both share and that's kind of like that way with the podcast with us tasha it's like we can share any in the successes that we we receive here because we're both contributing to it it's not like you know what i mean where one of us like i don't know it's like there's all there's a plenty of experiences of course you're happy for your husband when he gets a promotion at work but like when it's a labor that you guys share in together it's both of your success yeah I, i recorded when we got featured on itunes when i got the email and i i recorded recorded tasha reading it it was stupid you know it was a stupid feature it wasn't you know it was whatever but but. again that's one of those landmark moments once you're now you know you get that first feature and then if you know five years down the road you're featured every single week yeah that first landmark doesn't seem like much and now you need the next thing now you need uh joe rogan status whatever but yeah. every step of the way that goes back to what we were talking it's about it's true like that net the you know itunes knew they they feature featuring they, is your club and yeah. the next thing is what you said arenas or blah 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 blah, blah, yeah. blah yeah little victories and they don't always amount and we we have to remember this when we're like you know we're looking at trying to buy a house right but it's like so fucking cr- crazy everything's so expensive and we got to go look we got to remember we're not trying to like sell you know we're not trying to like you know, sell you know, like two dollar stickers to audience members and build one brick at a time. We're looking to fucking take this thing over and really get it to that next level where it's in enough homes where like the advertising money makes sense and this and that. And it's a bigger picture thing that it's like it's like with quantum leaps. Yeah, I always talk about the quantum leap. You understand? Do you not understand? Like the phys- I'm gonna I'm gonna fuck this up. But the physics of a quantum leap is when an electron circles the atom or whatever. 
it doesn't go from one level to the next. It doesn't it doesn't go and just travel there like a car would travel. It vanishes and then reappears on a different level. That's what a quantum leap is. It's this leap that we make um, in, in, in intellectually in our lives where we go, I get it now. And now you're at a different level. And that level comes with success of the podcast, with a New York Times review or somebody retweeting, or like one of those moments. And then you have 341 episodes where you can listen to and then add a couple decibels to the download count. And it sounds a little delusional to talk about that, but we're at a healthy level where we got that bastulum of, of sorry, just spit on you, Tasha. We got this bastulum of like listeners that's just kind of like circling around with no critical mass to it, but they're there. They're there and, and they're at, you know, 1,500 people right now. Now let's get them into like a, like, like let's get a small country's worth. You know, it's there. And my point is, is just like to look for the bigger picture. And I don't know how I got to that from, from Father's Day, but it's, I don't know. And you made up a, a few words and that's <laughs> Bastulum's not a word. Bastulum. Bastula. Ba- a bastula is like a, is you a, you also said decibel instead of decimal. I mean, not decibel, <laughs> decibel is a word. I'm going yeah, to yeah, yeah. not what you're looking <laughs> for. I just turned Tasha's decibels off so <laughs> she can't talk and I'll turn you back on. Anyway, we should get out of here in a second, but I wanted to wish all of our listeners a happy Father's Day, whether you are a father or you've had a father. Even if you didn't know your father, you know, give the guy some credit. Maybe he did the best he could. Sometimes to sometimes a dad giving the best he can is him abandoning his kids. I hate to say it. Some people just know they don't. Wow. My dad, my mom left my dad when she was pregnant with me, right? Uh-huh. She didn't plan on it. She had a return flight. Uh, and then my uncles didn't let her go back. And my and my dad never chased after her, like whether it was financially or emotionally, whatever it was about him, he knew she was better off. And in hindsight, he was right. You know, he was right that she was better off. She had to work really hard for it. She didn't have people taking care of her, but she was better off to like start new. And that was kind of like probably the greatest gift he ever gave us was like not not letting us be a part of his bullshit because he was like a, a Vietnam vet PTSD. And again, his other PTSD. kids. PTSD. Yeah. Did I say that right? Post-traumatic stress disorder. PTSD. There you go. Yeah. What did I, what did I say? You PTSD. Just, you just, I just slurred, slurred a little it. bit. I'm having a stroke. Uh, yeah. I don't know. So it's like, you know, uh, I think Father's Day, uh, aside from giving your dad credit, also, also have that empathy mm-hmm. to put yourself in their shoes to circle all the way back to empathy. Yeah. I mean, when you think about what our parents were doing by the time they were our age, 30 years old, my dad had three kids. And you're just hosting a mimosa show June 23rd, 11.30 a.m. <laughs> That's it. Direct message for... Uh, Doing only crowd work. <laughs> Doing only crowd work. We have some listeners, Kyle. Hopefully, Kyle's going to be there. Maybe Vic will be there. We got some podcast listeners Vic. that will be there. So. Shout out to so, Vic. Yeah. So, uh, well, I, I love hearing stories when our podcast listeners are getting laid. I love hearing about the dick they're getting. <laughs> if anyone wants to write in, please do. I love hearing... We got one our one in Ohio. She's writing in about she was having threesomes with her boyfriend. And what? And she, then he got sick, so she caught him cheating on. He, she, he, she went through his phone and caught him cheating on her with all these other people. It's like, fucking some. Our listeners are doing some shit out there. Wow, you know? it's way it's way more interesting than like what we got going on. We're just <laughs> making love and Paint crying in together. The <laughs> <laughs> Monogamous, <laughs> riding scooters around. Yeah, <laughs> hosting mimosa show June twenty third. Uh, anything else you want to promote? Congrats on uh, get the. Stand-up callback, you guys. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, I have... Jeez, uh, let me look at my calendar. Sorry, I should have prepped this. I have, uh, starting June 23rd, the Mimosa Show at the <laughs> Fourth Wall oh, we in don't Hollywood, say where, California. We don't say where it's at. Uh, it's secret, sorry. No, it's all right. Secret location. People have to message me f- to get the address. Uh, That's the strategy, because if you tell everyone where it's at, they go, oh, maybe I'll come. <laughs> and I go, how are you going to come if you don't know where it's at? <laughs> RSVP, and I'll tell you the address. That's what I like to tell people. All right. June 21st, Friday, June 21st, I will be at the 1111 space, I guess is the name of the venue. It's new. I've never been there. It's new to me. 8.30 p.m. Um, Friday, June 29th, I'll be at the Hollywood Improv Lab. Ooh, July nice. 7th. Yeah. Who show is that? Uh, Ryan Clark. I don't know who that is. He's, I guess he's kind of like the assistant booker there. Oh, cool. I knew him from way back when. Uh, July 7th, I'll be at Levity Live, Oxnard, California. Oh, shit. Let me Ooh. go with you. Yeah. I'll drive over there for that. Cool. That's a cool spot. Good food. Yeah. That's like a 500-seater. Yeah, it's a big spot. Nice. Got some podcast listeners out there. Yeah. Tasha, anything you want to promote? Nah. Your phone call with your dad you're about to make? You want to promote that? I'm going to 
make my phone call? How about a text? Why don't we structure out a text right now? No. <laughs> you're going to do it, you promise? Yeah, pinky absolutely. Swear? But you, you, you pinky swear that you're going to tell him that That's you're grateful story. for yeah. the story. And, yeah. I, and I can record it. And if you like it, we'll, we'll, put, we'll put it in the end. Yeah, Maybe. you got to record it. If you don't like it, you can always delete it. And it just lives in the cloud. It'll just be a lot of like... <laughs> okay. <laughs> do it while you're, on the, while you're driving. That's your good like safe place. Yeah, okay. Like, Dad, Maybe, he'll, like, Maybe he'll start crying too. And you guys can just enjoy that together. Tasha's yeah. dad is very stoic. But I think with the right... And again, I'm not saying like he's he's the type of guy he is, kind of introverted, but he's also like very smart and he's got a good sense of humor. Your dad's a, your dad's a very layered guy. Yeah, absolutely. Very layered. I got a lot of appreciation for him. But and I'll say this about her dad: like he knew how to be supportive to Tasha's mom, and and like let Tasha's mom take the lead when she had her career going and he kind of helped out in other ways. He's a very like very Renaissance man where he wasn't just like bull nosed. This is how it's supposed to be. It's like a teamwork that they have when, when, um, when both his mom and, and your mom's mom, when, when both your grandmothers were like sick, it's, I mean, it's a lot of work. You see someone's true colors when they're dealing with, uh, all the, all the aspects of like end of life care and this and that. And yeah. guy, guy, yeah, he's, he's a hard worker. And he's also, and he's also well-read, a smart guy. The funniest thing, I, the funniest story, I, I'm serious a lot, but of Tasha's dad is we all were on vacation in Mexico and everyone else is kind of like high energy and he's just like, get them away from me. He's just like a, like, it's like if you saw like a, like a dog with it's like six puppies all hitting it and it's just sitting there like, what the <laughs> fuck? That's her dad. And like, we were playing this very competitive, like Scrabble type of game. It's a very competitive, loud game where it's like, you're on the clock trying to like create words from nothing. And it's super loud. And her dad, we were at this Airbnb in Mexico and there was like a bookshelf of books and he was just sitting there reading his book by himself. And I was like, that's his pace. That's your dad's face. It's just like, he's there everything's under control everyone's making noise and he can be on the couch reading anyway he's a good guy um so i think we've covered all of our dad gratitude you want to shout out all the dads all the dads shout out to all of you we don't know too many dads out here we know some dads out I here know a couple <sighs> that's the problem with comedy it's like you want to get your life together before you become a dad you know what i mean yeah I, I, again i don't i don't want to get we're, we got to wrap it up so i don't want to get too far into the philosophical thoughts of what it means to be a dad but you know it's like Look, I mean, if you want, when it comes down to it, you want your kids to reflect the life, like the same sort of like love for life that you have. And part of that comes with like taking care of yourself. You know, we're not in a world where we're like shortage, you know, we have a shortage of people that, you know, these highways aren't uh, empty. You know, there's a lot of people out there. So like get your, get your life in order. It's like a Jordan Peterson thing. Like, you know, get your home in order before you criticize others. Well, it's like get your home in order before you start making a family. <laughs> and that's kind of what you got to do with comedy and all the other things where not to say like we need, you need to put it off, but like really focus on building your own foundation because that's well, where that's your kids going to have to grow. Oh, that foundation sets them up for success too. Yeah. You know, your kids are going to be happier, healthier, better, more productive members of society if they've got dads who hug them. Versus like know, dads who are who just are like stressed bitterly out. stressed and this and that. You know, anyway. All right, I guess we'll get out of here. So happy Father's Day to all of our dads out there and uh, all of our sons and daughters that are listening. You're doing good. You're doing all right. So if you didn't get a chance to call your dad, you know, there's always tomorrow. You know, you might not be listening to this on Father's Day, but maybe this is motivation enough to make that phone call. Hey, if you want to record it, <gasps> send, send it in. Send it to us. That's a great we idea. I love that. Record a selfie video or, a, or an audio. Or just send us a picture of you and your dad or something if you get together for Father's Day. Send yeah. us a pic. If it's we want to hear about the time that you guys spent together if you did some barbecuing or lawn mowing or whatever. Or, or if you, you walked on him. Walked on your parents fucking and you saw how I big your dad's dick was. You're like, I guess I'm on my mom's side for my family. What's Fix wrong something. with you? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, um, all right, that's it for everybody. Have a good day, everybody. This was the side. Thank you so much, Channing Apodaca. Thank you guys for joining us today. Our brother, our family. Tell Crystal we said hi. I will. And um, let's go give Boone some scritches. Tasha Courtney. All right. Bye. Bye. (laughs) (laughs) Day one nut. (laughs) When you're nutting on the first day. We should write that song and then like play it for the next episode. (laughs) The guy who did our intro, you should be like, hey, listen, yeah. we've got this idea. <laughs> who do we know about the musicians? It starts on a three, 
two, day one nut. Here it is today, day one nut, when you put it in her vajay. Babe, no, just farm that one out to someone else. Send that yeah, nut like a carrot. And there's just like eight bars of just nothing in the cooch, nothing in the cooch.